In the previous lecture, we looked at generic and non-generic collections and compared them to native arrays. It turned out that native arrays are the fastest, but generic collections have the advantage that they automatically grow as you put more elements into them. So, if the number of elements is known in advance, an array is the fastest option. But the .NET framework actually supports three types of arrays. The first type is the one-dimensional array that we've seen in the previous lecture. Anything declared with the square array brackets in c -sharp is a one-dimensional array. For example, the integer array shown here. You declare the array like this and you access elements like this. The second type is a multi-dimensional array. For example, a two-dimensional array is declared like this. And you access elements like this. The third type is a jagged array. This is simply an array of arrays. You declare a jagged array like this and then create new array instance for each top-level element, like this. Then you access an element like this. It's called a jagged array because each top-level element can have a different number of sub-level elements. A 2x2 two two jagged array can have a jagged right-hand side, like this. So, how do these arrays compare? Well, let's go to Xamarin Studio and find out. I've written a program that initializes three arrays, each containing one million elements. Here is the one-dimensional array, with a thousand times a thousand elements. And this loop assigns a value to each element. And here is the two-dimensional array, now initialized to a thousand by a thousand elements. I have two nested loops to go through each row and column, and I assign a value to each array element. The third method uses a jagged array. A disadvantage of jagged arrays is that you have to initialize the entire outer array with array instances. That code is here. Let's find out which array is the fastest. Ready? Here we go. This probably wasn't a surprise. The one-dimensional array is the fastest, with 12 milliseconds. Then comes the jagged array, with 16 milliseconds. And finally, the two-dimensional array, with 24 milliseconds. Now, you'll probably remember from the previous lecture that the intermediate language has native support for one-dimensional arrays. This is why the one-dimensional array is fastest and the jagged array comes in second. A jagged array is simply a one-dimensional array nested inside another one-dimensional array. So you still get the speed benefits of the built-in intermediate language support. Perhaps surprisingly, the two-dimensional array is the slowest. And this is because a two-dimensional array in .NET is just a class, without any special runtime support. Here, let me show you in my compiled code. If I set a breakpoint, rerun the program, and switch to disassembly view, and look up the correct line, here. Here is the one-dimensional array. You can see the familiar setElement instruction that writes the value into the array element. And here is the jagged array. First, a loadElement instruction to load the reference to the inner array. And then a setElement instruction to write a value into that inner array. But now look at the two-dimensional array. It's simply a call to a static set method of the array class. 
one method call for every element access, plus whatever implementation is inside that set method. That's a lot more code to execute than the one-dimensional and jagged arrays. Now, you've just seen that a one-dimensional array is faster than a two-dimensional array. So, we can speed up a two-dimensional array by using a technique called array flattening. Take a look at this 3x3 three three array of integers. That's a total of nine elements that I can lay out like this. I have color-coded each row of elements. Now, I can also pack all of this data into a one-dimensional array, like this. I can access an element given the row and column, like this. So let's try that in code. I have a program here that sets up a 1000 by 1000 integer array and then loops through all the elements, accessing them one by one. Here is the same code, but with a one-dimensional array with one million elements. I still have the two nested loops to access all rows and all columns, but now I use the translation formula to flatten the row and column into a one-dimensional index. Which code do you think is faster? It's hard to tell, actually. We know the one-dimensional array will be faster, but now we also have the overhead of doing the extra multiplication to translate the row and column into a flattened index. Will the extra multiplication offset the overhead of the two-dimensional array? Let's find out. I am running the program now. And here we are. The one-dimensional array is still the fastest option, with 15 milliseconds, compared to the two-dimensional array with 22 milliseconds. The flattened array is 1.5 times faster. Here is a graph with all performance results. The two-dimensional array is two times slower than the one-dimensional array. Even in the flattening test, when the one-dimensional array had the extra overhead of having to do a multiplication, it is still 1.5 times slower. This suggests that flattening two-dimensional arrays is a good idea. Perhaps surprisingly, the jagged array has quite a good performance too. It's only 1.3 times slower than the one-dimensional array, and when compared to the flattening results, they are almost equal. 15 milliseconds for the flattened one-dimensional array and 16 milliseconds for the jagged array. The difference in performance is only one millisecond, which is 6%. So, how should you use arrays? If you only have one dimension of data, Use one-dimensional arrays for the best performance. If you have two or more dimensions of data, consider flattening the array. If this is not possible, consider using a jagged array. If there is no other option, use a multi-dimensional array.